Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents... You'll be dead in a week. Featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder... Come with me. Late yesterday afternoon, Captain Friday and his operative Skip Turner hopped a plane in San Francisco and hurried south to Hollywood on a very mysterious mission. They were instructed to meet Eve Carson at a place called Maggie's Intimate Drinking Salon. It's a flossy drinking establishment located on the Sunset Strip, an exclusive small shop district. The two boys landed at the municipal airport, hustled off the plane, and grabbed a cab to their destination. They found Maggie's intimate drinking salon an intriguing spot, but they were even more intrigued with the story Eve Carson was telling them. Right from the beginning, Miss Carson. Well, you see, Captain Friday, my brother Wesley and I came to California after father, our last living relative, died in the East. Between us, we're worth a million, maybe two million dollars. Oh, gone, a little old female gold mine. Well, that's what a lot of the smart boys thought. Nobody's worked me yet. Go on with your story. We loved it out here and were very happy. Then about two months ago, something happened. My brother was coming down to breakfast one morning when suddenly he lost consciousness and plunged headfirst down the stairs. I see. Bumped his head in the fall, and he hasn't been the same since. No, he apparently wasn't hurt in the fall. But he went to our doctor to find out why he lost consciousness. The doctor told him, Wes, in a week you'll be dead. Well, you didn't take just one doctor's word for it. Oh, no, we checked with three other specialists. And they all say your brother will be dead in a week? Yes. I see. Then, of course, we're very sympathetic, Miss Carson, but where do we fit into the picture? Ever since Wes heard the bad news... Well, he just shrugged his shoulders and said, what have I got to lose? And he's been running wild ever since, huh? He's been doing everything that amuses him. Right now, it amuses him to be tied up with Blackie North and his bunch of cutthroats. Blackie North? Hey, you mean a gangster? Yes. But see here, I, I don't see where Please, we... Please, Captain Friday, if you could sort of look out for him, take care of him, protect him. Protect him from what? Why, from himself, I, I suppose. If he's got to die... At least he can die with the family name clean, not as a criminal. If I get you right, you want us to curb his last week of fun just so you can write, he was a good man on his tombstone. But this little conference wasn't the only thing that took place at Maggie's intimate drinking salon. Skip Turner, a little bored with the inactivity in the dimly lighted cocktail bar picked a fight with the piano player and laid him gently across the keyboard. He did the same thing with the waiter and then tied up the hat check girl, while Captain Friday disposed of two of Blackie North's gunmen who had descended on them. It was all over before Skip learned from Wes Carson, the man they were hired to protect, that the piano player was none other than Blackie North himself. Say, what are you trying to do, fella? Commit suicide? Huh? That man you just knocked out is Blackie North. Well, what about it? You wake up some morning with a carcass full of lead. Who are you, anyway? Wes, please, they're friends of mine. Eve, are you the cause of all this? Do you mind, Wes? These gangsters are nothing to you, are they? No, they're just amusing. But Blackie North's a pretty tough guy. Somebody's going to get hurt. Who are these two fellows? This is Captain Friday and Skip Turner. How are you, Wes? Your sister here has hired us to play bodyguard and fall guy for you during this next week. Oh. She told you I'd be dead in a week? That's right. Now, during that time, I intend doing whatever it suits me to do. Oh, she didn't spare the horses none. We know the score. And you guys are crazy enough to see me through? Well, we'll try to keep you out of jail. That may be more difficult than you think. The police want me, you know. Yeah? Why? Oh, they don't know they want me. They just want the guy who stole this handful of diamonds out of a certain movie star's bedroom. Hey, look at them rocks. Why'd you steal them? Just for the thrill. Just to see if I could. Anybody else know you took them? No. Hmm. Mind if uh, I take them? Not at all. I haven't any use for them. Well, what are you going to do with them? Here, Skip. Hmm? Plant these diamonds on Blackie North before he wakes up. <laughs> It'll be a pleasure. I'll go out to the bar and get the police on the telephone. 
We'll be doing two good deeds. Helping the police capture a criminal and fixing it so we won't be murdered. Hey, you hear that? The police are coming. Yeah, they must have got wind or something. Get rid of those diamonds quick, Skip. Right, boss. Come on, Eve. Wes, let's get moving. Moving where? Well, what would, uh, what would amuse you? <laughs> I want to rob a bank. And so the little party left Maggie's intimate drinking salon and retired to the Carson home in Beverly Hills to plan a bank robbery. That was last night. This morning, Captain Friday and Skip are seated in the breakfast nook wondering about their next assignment with Wes Carson. Hey, with all this leather upholstery on the window seat and a glass top on a table, this looks more like a cocktail bar than a breakfast nook. <laughs> Yeah, I can see you don't get around much in Beverly Hills, Skip. No, and I ain't used to going without breakfast, neither. What gives? Miss Carson's preparing it, I believe. It's the maid's day off. Oh, this would have to happen to me. I'm starving. Oh, it may not be so bad. She seems a very practical girl. Yeah, but I wish you didn't have to practice on me. I... What you staring out the window for? The fog's lifting. Well, it always does about this time. What you looking at? Huh. Uh, just as I suspected. There he is on the corner. Who? One of Blackie Norris' gorillas. See him? Where? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the torpedoes we beat up last night. He's watching this house, all right. Uh, you want me to go out and dust him off? No, we got more important things to attend to. And don't say anything to Eve. Might worry her. wonder if the police picked up Blackie last night. No, unfortunately, our little plan didn't work out. How do you know? No, I've already read the morning paper. That siren we heard was a police car, all right. But they were on their way to a club a couple of blocks down the strip. Yeah? What happened? Oh, the usual brawl. Movie actor and an orchestra leader. Well, then, hey, that means that Blackie's got them diamonds and nobody knows it but us. It's about the size of it. We certainly played Santa Claus to Blackie last night. Now, watch it. Here's Miss Carson. Huh? Oh, good morning, Miss Carson. Good morning. Sorry to make you wait so long for breakfast. Mmm, hot cakes. I hope you like them. Please help yourself to the syrup while I pour the coffee. Could uh, we do anything to help? No, everything's under control now, I think. Please begin. <laughs> I don't need no urging. Mm, these hot cakes look delicious. Mm, and they are delicious. Man, pancakes are my favorite fruit. And these are the best I ever tasted. Hey, you certainly fooled me, Miss Carson. Fooled you? How? Well, you don't look like a babe who could hash. <laughs> <laughs> That's a left-handed compliment, Miss Carson. Skip means you're so beautiful and charming, you'd never suspect you could also cook. Oh, thank you. But I'm afraid I haven't cooked much since finishing school. Oh, you cooked in school? Well, of course. In the domestic economy class. We all had to take it. Well, blow me down. Hey, they're finally getting some sense in these colleges. Won't you have some more? No, thanks. You better save the rest of that batter for Wes. He'll be hungry when he wakes up. Uh, you're, you're sure he's all right, Captain Friday? Oh, yes. I only put one sleeping tablet in his drink last night. They're harmless. I do wish you weren't so set on robbing a bank. So do I. And if it wasn't for you and your pancakes, Miss Carson, I'd be tempted to take it on the lamb right now. But he is set on it. That's why I gave him the pill last night, so I could make a few phone calls. Do you think he can manage it? Safely, I mean. Well, Mr. Jordan's on his way here right now. Mr. Jordan? Uh, he's the manager of the city bank. Your bank, I believe. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Oh, Captain Friday, I love my brother. He's such a good, clean boy. Don't let anything happen to him, please. We'll do our best, Miss Carson, but robbing a bank is dangerous business. I know. And, and sometimes I, I think I shouldn't. But I do want him to be happy for this last week. Mm, probably Jordan now. He said he'd be right over. Where would you like to talk to him? Right here will do. I'll bring him right in. Hey, uh, you know this fellow Jordan, boss? Not very well. I've met him. Well, what if he won't go for the deal? I think we can handle him. Mr. Jordan says he knows you, Captain Friday. How are you, Jordan? Well, Captain, it's good to see you again. This is my right-hand man, Skip Turner. Well, glad to know you, Mr. Jordan. Well, thank you. Well, Captain, I brought along Miss Carson's bank statement, but I must confess I'm a little puzzled by the mystery. I think I can clear it up for you. May I see the statement, please, Mr. Jordan? If it's agreeable to Miss Carson. Quite. Hmm. Well, it shows a balance of over 200000 in the checking account. Is that right? That's right. Two hundred grand. A face and a figure like yours and 200 grand in the bank. And a good cook besides. Oh, the Lord sure good to some people. If you finished extolling the virtues of Miss Carson Skip, we'll get down to business. I'll be quiet. But you can't keep me from dreaming. Would you be willing to risk 200,000 in this, uh, this robbery, Miss Carson? 
anything for... Where's Captain Friday? Good. We have a strange request to make of you, Mr. Jordan. Yeah? We want to rob your bank. Rob my bank? <laughs> but surely you're joking. No, we're in deadly earnest. We want to steal $200,000 of Miss Carson's money out of your bank. But I don't understand. Mr. It. Jordan, you know my brother Wesley. Of course I know Wes. We handle his account as well as yours. Well, he, he'll he be dead in five days. We, Wes dead? That's the prophecy of the best doctors on the coast. But, but I can't believe it. He looks so healthy. Why, only yesterday I saw him. And... Nevertheless, Mr. Jordan, we have it on the best authority that Wesley Carson will die within five days. Apparently there's nothing medicine can do about it. Oh, Miss Carson, I'm so sorry. Wes is such a fine young man. Now you can well understand that Miss Carson wants her brother to enjoy all the happiness possible during these last five days. But of course. And if there's anything I can do... There I... is. A lot you can do. You can let him rob your bank. It's an impulse he's had since childhood. And now he feels there's no longer any reason for repressing it. Oh, I see. Here's our plan. Miss Carson will give you a check for $200,000. You distribute this money among your tellers. We'll stage the robbery, enter the bank, and steal Miss Carson's money. Will you cooperate? Uh, well, uh, of course I'd like to help, but robbing a bank, there are difficulties I'm sure you haven't thought of. Difficulties? What are they? Well, in the first place, we're insured against robbery. You'd have to have an understanding with the insurance company. I talked to the president of the insurance company last night. He's agreed to delay the investigation for six days, after which time all the stolen money will be found in an ash can at the rear of the bank. Then you can tear up Miss Carson's check. Well, if the insurance company's agreeable, but what if something goes wrong? Well, you're protected. You have Miss Carson's check. You owe her nothing. You're out nothing. Have you fixed it with the police? No, I don't think they'd approve. And secondly, I'm afraid Wes might suspect. Yeah, and as long as we're in this, we might as well enjoy it. I'm afraid I don't share the same craving for excitement. When would this holdup take place? This afternoon. Skip, Wes, and I'll enter the bank about ten minutes to three, just before closing time. You mean you want to stage this robbery in, in broad daylight? Why not? But Wes is well known at the bank, and a lot of people know you. You'd be recognized immediately. You leave that to us. I can assure you none of us will be recognized. You mean you wear masks? Mm, something like that. But I have a gun in my desk. I'd be forced to use it. I know. Top drawer, left side. Just leave it in the same drawer, and you won't have a chance to use it. But the more I think of this, the more ridiculous it seems. Robbing a bank in broad daylight. You, you can't get away with it. Well, it has been done. I know, but they were professionals. And besides, they're usually caught sooner or later. And another thing, there's an electric button under every teller's window. The moment one of them got suspicious, a light uh, touch on one of these buttons would bring the police. Well, the tellers won't touch any buttons. Not if we have them covered. Well, those tellers are mostly girls. I'd never forgive myself if anything happened to one of them. Nothing worse than a fainting spell, I assure you. Oh, I'll take care of the ladies. How's my department, Mr. Jordan? And they'll have something to talk about for the rest of their lives. You're forgetting about our guard. He also carries a gun. Oh, Hennessy? I'll take care of him, too. I don't know. He's a good man, Hennessy. Well, good men are my specialty. And it's settled? Uh, will you write out a check for 200000 Miss Carson? Not so fast, Captain. I haven't agreed to anything. Mr. Jordan, put yourself in the place of Wes Carson. Please, Mr. Jordan. He only has five days. I, I know, Miss Carson, but, but robbing a bank You're is... nothing to lose, Jordan. To all outward appearances, this will be an ordinary holdup as far as you're concerned. If we're caught, we'll take the rap. Uh, why, uh, I could lose my position or, or, or land in jail. Not at all. You're not to implicate yourself in any way. Well, well then... Is the check ready, Miss Carson? Here it is. $200,000 drawn on Mr. Jordan's bank. Well, I'll try. Oh, that's a way to talk, fella. We'll have a lot of preparations to make, Mr. Jordan, so you'll excuse us if we rush you off. We'll see you later in the day. Good heavens, you really mean you're going to do it today? At ten minutes to three. Oh, dear. Well, all right. But I warn you, I'll have to do my best to stop you. Of course. That's the way we want it. We'll take our chances. Well, goodbye and good luck. I certainly hope everything goes off smoothly. You don't know how grateful I am, Mr. Jordan. I'll see you to the door. Oh, dear, ten minutes to three. Come on, Skip. You've got to wake Wes and then do some shopping. And then rob a bank in broad daylight. <laughs> Man alive, this is right down my alley. busy morning for Captain Friday and Skip. After waking Wes Carson and finding him none the worse for having taken a sleeping pill the night before, they left him eating a hearty breakfast while they departed on a shopping tour. 
The tour included a Hollywood studio arsenal, where they procured several rounds of blank cartridges, and a Hollywood costumers, where Captain Friday selected a number of articles of clothing and makeup items. They're now in an upstairs bedroom of the Carson home, getting ready for the big adventure, the robbing of a bank in broad daylight. Well, how do I look, Cap? Like a real ranch hand? <laughs> I'd say a cross between a ranch hand and a member of a hillbilly band. <laughs> <laughs> These blue jeans are a little tight. Well, that's in character. All cowboys wear them tight. Yeah. I gotta get used to these high heel boots, too. Feel like I'm falling down all the time. You better get over that feeling quick. On the slightest mistake this afternoon, we'll all be falling through a hangman's trap. Hmm. Hey, you think we can depend on Carson keeping his head? I can't tell what he'll do in the excitement. We'll have to watch him close. Have you put the blanks in his gun? Oh, not so loud, Skip. Carson's in the next room. Yes, all the guns are carrying blanks. Oh, don't trust me either, huh? Of course I trust you. But I know there's nothing like the sound of a gun going off to let people know you mean business. Hey, you mean we may have to let somebody know we mean business? I don't think so, but we're ready if we have to. I'll get it, boss. Well, howdy, partner. <laughs> Just drove a hundred hay to Kittle down from the Bar X. They're <laughs> mighty thirsty, and so am I. How about a water in my stock while I wet my whistle? <laughs> Good boy, Wes. You're a born rancher. <laughs> think I'll do? Sure you will. Oh, come in, Miss Carson. Isn't Wes wonderful? With that blonde beard, I'd never know him in a thousand years. Yeah, and that ten-gallon hat makes him six inches taller. Yeah, let's see, Wes. Let me look at you. Blue serge suit, cuffs tucked into high heel boots, stiff collar, bowstring tie. Yep, yeah, you'll do. You're a wealthy cattleman if I ever saw one. Gee, this is exciting, isn't it? I never had so much fun in my life. <laughs> I had an awful time getting him away from the mirror. You should have been an actor, Wes. <laughs> well, how you like me, Miss Carson? Of course, I ain't a wealthy cattle man like Wes and Captain Friday here. Me, I'm just a poor ranch hen that drives <laughs> that big car and does all the dirty work. I love your long sideburns. <laughs> and that false nose makes you look positively beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, if you saw me on the street, would you know me? Well, if I did, I, I don't think I'd admit it. <laughs> but seriously, boys, the disguises are wonderful. Even though Mr. Jordan knows you, I don't think he'll recognize you in those outfits. I hope you're right. Our lives may depend on it. Now let's go over our plan again. Uh, <clears throat> I'll get in character by rolling a cigarette. Get this now, both of you. We'll drive Miss Carson's sedan up to the curb in front of the bank. There'll be a piece of blanket hanging from the trunk in the rear. The end of the blanket will cover the license plate. That sounds all right. Naturally, I don't want Eve implicated in any way. Now we're at the bank. We go in together. Skip a little respectfully behind Wes and me. Mm -hmm. We go straight to Jordan's office behind the little wooden railing, Wes. What do you do, Skip? Mm -hmm. Oh, I look for Hennessy. He'll probably be around the counter in the middle of the floor. Hennessy? Oh, oh yes, that's the guard. He ought to be easy to spot in his uniform. Oh, I'll find him. And then I ask him to show me to the washroom. It's in the rear of the building. Hennessy prides himself on being a gentleman, so I think he'll escort you back there. Well, if he don't, I'll have a gun in his ribs. He'll be polite, all right. When you get to the washroom, you tie him up and gag him. You got your materials? Mm-hmm, right here. Lariat and yellow scarf. Good. Then you get back and cover the entrance. Let anybody come in that wants to, but don't let anybody go out. <laughs> Over my dead body. Well, let's hope not. Yeah. Meanwhile, Wes, you and I are sitting in Mr. Jordan's office. Mm -hmm. We're a couple of ranchers from San Fernando Valley, and we want to negotiate a loan. Right. We discuss the terms of the loan with Jordan until we see Skip return from the washroom and go to the entrance. But what if Skip needs somebody else back there in the washroom? Oh, I'll take care of him. This rope's pretty long. Oh, oh well, Wes, must you go through with this? So many things can happen. Oh, don't worry, sis. We'll have a picnic. Yeah, this ain't no time to get scared. Granting everything's okay and back. If everything's okay, I'll walk through the bank... and then when I go by Jordan's office, I'll take off my hat and wipe my forehead. And when you get that signal, Wes... I remark on the heat and ask Jordan where I can get a drink of water. Now, I don't know what Jordan will say, but I do know there's a water cooler in the teller's cage adjoining Jordan's office. If he suggests the cooler, he'll probably open the door for you himself. If he doesn't, I will suggest it. You can see it from the office through the grill work. Mm -hmm. I go into the cage and get a drink from the cooler. Now, some of the tellers will probably look around as you enter the cage, but as you take a paper cup from the holder and pour yourself a drink, they'll probably continue their work. I finish my drink and whip my gun out of my coat pocket and order all tellers to step back two feet from their windows. By this time, I'll have taken Jordan's gun from his desk drawer. With the gun in Jordan's back, we'll both go into the cage. I'll have the tellers covered, all five of them. I take this sack from under my hat like this, and then I go to work in the number one teller. Right. You order him to empty his drawer into the sack. Then you go on to the next teller. 
If all goes well, it shouldn't take more than 30 seconds to empty all five drawers into the sack. Then we back out the same door we came in and break for the entrance. Uh, not break, exactly. Walk. Don't run. A lot of people in the bank won't even know what's going on. The less commotion we make, the better. Yeah, and don't forget your sack with. <laughs> oh, no. It's full of money, and I've got it under my arm. I walk outside and get in the back seat of the car. I get in the front seat and start the motor. But what if you're jammed in? You know, a car in front and a car in back. In Beverly Hills, cars park facing the curb. Nothing can get in front or back of us without blocking the street. Oh, of course I know that. I, I guess I, I'm so nervous I can't think. Now, I back out into the street facing south. Skip? Uh, I keep the entrance covered until I see you're ready. Then I run and jump into the front seat beside you. And we're off. Once we get into the canyons and the hills, we'll change our clothes and get rid of our disguises. We stuff the blanket into the trunk so our license plate shows. We drive calmly back here and park the car in the garage. Once we get that sack of money in the house, we're safe. Oh, sounds great. When do we start? And let's see. It's 2.30 now. Take us about 10 minutes to get there. 10 minutes more to get the right parking space. And we'd better be on our way now. I'm ready. Let's go. Goodbye, Wes. Let me kiss you. Oh, don't worry, Eve. Everything will be all right. But how will I know... When will you be back? It shouldn't take us more than 15 minutes to change clothes afterward. We should be back here in uh, 45 minutes. I have a feeling this is going to be the longest 45 minutes of my life. So have I. Come on, let's get it over with. You see, gentlemen, the appraisal of the property... Mr. Jordan, may I see you for a moment? Yes, of course, Mr. Littell. Uh, would you excuse me for a second? Yes, certainly, Mr. Jordan. Only take a second. I'll be right back. Watch it now, Wes. Skip has taken Hennessy into the back room. He should be back by now. And we can't make a move till Skip's at the front door. What if he doesn't show up? Don't worry about Skip. He'll hold up his end. Can we just stall along with Jordan? That's the idea. Watch it. Here he comes back. As I was saying, gentlemen... You must understand that I couldn't make a loan until I'd had your property appraised. Uh, that may take several days. Well, I'm feared you can't wait that long. See, we need the money now. We've got a bargain in some beeves up north, Mr. Jordan. Uh, what time is it? Yeah, almost three o'clock. Why? Oh, I don't know. Just wondering. Yeah, I guess ain't time to visit no other banks today. They all close for sundown, don't they, Mr. Jordan? Yes, I'm afraid nearly all banks close at three o'clock, including our own gentlemen. Well, we don't seem to be doing no good here. See anything of Bill? Oh, don't worry none about Bill. He'll take care of himself. <laughs> Bill's one of our ranch hands, Mr. Jordan. He don't get a chance to come to town very often. Uh, why don't you gentlemen come in early tomorrow? We'll have more time to talk over your loan. I'm sure we can work it out some way. Early? Say about uh, cock crow? Cock crow? Ha, <laughs> ha. Yeah, I always forget you city fellas don't know how to talk time. Cock crow's five o'clock. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, I'm afraid that's a bit early. You see, we don't open our doors to the public until... There's uh... Bill. Where? Yep, I see him. I told you you didn't have to worry none about him. Mm, he must be pretty warm. Bill's taking off his hat and wiping his head. Yeah, it is pretty warm in the city, especially when you're dressed up in your Sunday clothes. Have a drink of water handy, Mr. Jordan. Water? No, I'm afraid Ain't we don't. Ain't that one of them newfangled water coolers in that there cage? Oh, yes, but we don't usually... Go on in, help yourself. Mr. Jordan won't care, will you? Oh, no, 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 of course not. But I'll have to unlock the door to the cage. Mm, sorry to be so much bother. When you're so dry, you're chewing on cactus. There you are. Cool is over there. Hey, what are you doing in that door? Button your lip, Jordan. Now ahead of me. Into the cage. It's you. Why, I didn't recognize... Pipe down and do as you're told. Uh, uh, yes, sir. All tellers, hands over your heads. Step back two paces from your windows. Oh, oh, it's a hold up. Hold up. It's a hold up. You there, Blondie. Back two paces. They're all back. Get going with the sack. Now, oh, you. Dump your drawer into this sack. Keep your hands up and your heads down. All right. Number two. Into the sack. Uh, you, you'd better do as he says. Yeah. Number three window. Empty your drawer into the sack. And don't spill any. Now number four. Thank you, miss. One more. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And I'd advise you to stay away from those buttons. The first person who touches one gets a bullet. That's Bill out there in the doorway. He can hit a dime at 100 yards. Come on, bring the sack. Back and out. Keep him covered. Take it easy, Wes. Here's the car. I don't see Skip yet. Keep your eye peeled. I'm ready to go. Here he comes. Come in. We made it. Look, there's a soldier signaling. Oh, no time for hitchhikers now. He's an MP. Look at his armband. Yeah, waving us down. I'll slow down. 
Hey, look, there's somebody coming from the other side. They're jumping on the running board. All right, get him up and into the back seat. We're covered from both sides. Quiet, punk. Keep him covered, Porgy. Blackie North, in a soldier's uniform. That's a federal offense, fella. You know that? Look who's talking. I got him now. Take the wheel, Porgy. North, the gangster from Maggie's intimate drinking salon, apparently heard of a bank robbery deal and had his guerrillas on hand to collect the $200,000 without even going near the bank. On top of that, he still has the diamonds that Captain Friday and Skip Turner planted on him in the hope the police would find them. A pretty good day's work for Blackie North. Listen next week for the third and last episode of You'll Be Dead in a Week. You are listening to Adventures by Morse.